Hey guys, welcome to Rudra Tech Tutorial and in this chapter 24 of Angular 8 Unit Testing with Jasmine and Kerma, we are going to look at Life Cycle Hooks Part 1. Objective of this video is how to test on init and on changes life cycle hooks. Angular provides 8 life cycle hooks which are ng on changes, ng on init, ng do check, ng after content init, ng after content checked, ng after view init, ng after view checked, ng on destroy. So these life cycle hooks are useful for performing certain actions at specific time in the life cycle of a component or a directive. Out of these eight life cycle hooks, we'll be focusing on two life cycle hooks that is ng on changes and ng on init. ng on changes is executed when the input property of a component or directive is updated and it is the first life cycle hook that is getting executed then is the ng on init. ng on init is executed only once at the time of initialization of the component. Now let's go and see how to unit test these two lifecycle hooks. Now before we move ahead with our lifecycle testing, here is a sample component that I have created for demonstration purpose. This has a message property, uh, at the rate input property which is username and display message. And I have also implemented ng on init and ng on changes lifecycle hooks. So this ng on init will update the message variable and the ng on changes will check whether the username is updated and if it is updated the display message is getting updated and displayed on the UI. Now let's go and see the code for unit testing. Now here is the code that I have created for unit testing the lifecycle hooks. In this case we will be unit testing only two lifecycle hooks ng on init and ng on changes. Now the first thing I have done is created the variables for component that is the life hook testing component then fixture and a debug element variable. In testbed.configuration I have included life hook testing component and a dummy component. I will explain about the dummy component in a bit. Then in before each there is a fixture component instance and a debug element is created. After that fixture.detect changes is executed. When we execute the fixture dot detect changes first time within a unit test or within a before each block, the component for which the fixture was created gets initialized. And at that point of initialization, ng on init lifecycle hooks also gets called. Hence, in our first unit test case, we have returned only expect component dot message to contain on init executed. Now, why I have included this? This is because in the component that I have created, I have set the message on init executed and appended the incoming message if it exists. Now, hence at the time when the fixture dot detect changes is getting executed, the on init or the ng on init lifecycle hooks gets executed. This test will pass successfully. Then there is another way using which we can unit test the on init lifecycle hook and that is by manually executing the lifecycle hook method. Now in this case I have set component dot message to dummy value and then executed the ng on init method. After that I have checked expect component dot message to contain this particular message that is on init executed dummy value. This unit test case will pass successfully as well. After that I have executed the fixture dot detect changes. Once this fixture dot detect changes is executed, I have checked d dot native element dot query selector on init. So I have created a s2 element with on init as a id and I am going to check the text content of that particular s2 element is similar to the message that we had updated in the lifecycle hook method. So this will pass as well. So Testing the ng on init lifecycle hook is very easy. Either you can do it by manually calling the ng on init lifecycle hook or using the fixture dot detect changes method at first time of execution. Then comes the ng on changes. Well, ng on changes testing is quite tricky. So in this unit test case, we are going to manually execute the ng on changes lifecycle hook and see the result. So here. 
I have set component dot username to Rudra Tech. Now the username property is the one property that is annotated with or decorated with at the rate input decorator. Then once this property is set, I am going to call component dot ng on changes and in this one I am going to set username and equal to new simple changes and in this username I am going to set the components property. So this will manually execute the ng on changes lifecycle hook then i'm going to execute fixture.detect changes now this fixture.detect changes is executed to display the message on the ui so here expect debug element dot native element dot query selector and i have created an h2 element within the template with the id change id and we are going to check the text content of that particular h2 element and going to check username rudratech.registered now why this way because in the lifecycle hook on the component we have managed to set the value like this hence the h2 element or the element with the id hash change id should have this value so this unit test case will pass since we are passing the value to simple changes and manually executing the ng on changes lifecycle hook so this is one way of testing the ng on changes the other way of unit testing the ng on changes lifecycle hook is to wrap it in another component that can be done using a dummy component now here i have created a dummy component and included the live hook testing selector that is the selector of our component under test and set the username value to value that i want to set now in this case the username variable is declared in the dummy component and as i previously discussed the dummy component is included in the testbed configurations declaration now coming to our test in the test i have created the the dummy fixture dummy component instance and a debug element for our dummy component then i have set the dummy component dot username to tech rudra 2040 then executed the dummy fixture dot detect changes now in this case the ng on changes will get automatically executed since the input property is getting updated within this dummy component and hence in the unit test case we are going to expect that the element with the id change id is having this particular value and hence this unit test case will pass as well all the four unit test case that we have discussed for on init or ng on init and ng on changes lifecycle hooks there are two ways using which we can unit test the both lifecycle hooks one is using the fixture dot detect changes for on init and other is manually executing the method of the lifecycle hooks and for ng on changes manually executing the lifecycle hook method or including that component selector within another component like a dummy component that i have demonstrated and then executed so these all four test cases will pass and let's see the output on the browser so here you can see all the lifecycle hooks unit test cases for on init and on changes are executed successfully so this is how you can unit test the on init and ng on init lifecycle hooks successfully and we will be discussing more about the lifecycle hooks in the future video that is the part 2 video i hope you have liked this video understood this video do subscribe and thank you